What a flattering look we are walking today again. So it's Sunday. Welcome. I'm Sophie. Um, last week we did like a day by day vlog kind of. Craft vlog. This is a craft vlog or podcast or how you want to call it. Um, we're going to talk today about what I did this week. I didn't manage to pop in like daily like last week. So we're going to make a Sunday recap this week from what I made. What, what, what I was doing this week in the crafty world. And the first thing, first thing you may already... Huh? I, I did... I walked on my background, not like it, it happens to be nice to be the background of um, for the podcast, vlog, craft, vlog, whatever, for uh, just shredding here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so it's next, my, my next word to wall. <laughs> uh-huh. um, yeah, so it's nice. I, I see it every day, the wall. So it's not only background for a nice video, but it happens to be. So it's cute, I think. Um, I'm planning on um, hanging on more and more first on Monday, Tuesday. I hung the first thing. This is a um, crochet swatch I made um, weeks ago maybe month, months ago and I um, found the stick a month ago or two weeks ago on the street when I was walking to work I just picked it up by walking by it just kind of grabbed my attention while I was going to work I don't know why and there was a stick in the middle of the street and I was I saw it immediately glance at it and just walking by like it was pretty cool movement and then yeah I just put it into my backpack and then at home I just put it somewhere and then I forgot about it I, I was planning to do something like this with it so yeah it just took me a few weeks to hang it up and here we have uh, other swatches um, I did um also weeks months ago they just yeah our swatches for for projects I, I want to do there's no nothing really coming out of this swatch so I, but it, it's too pretty to to unravel it and I just want to display it because I think it's cute um and this too I I, I like Keeping my swatches, I think it's cute. Um, I'm I'm doing um, a garment, uh, a sweater out of the swatches. Where this is, it's a star stitch. It's knitting. This was crochet. This this is knitting. Star stitch. Um, where I'm doing. Um, I can show you. I I didn't work on it for some time, so. Uh, yeah <laughs> it's just lying here um so yeah it's the ribbing it's it's the star stitch and then the sweater will be the bubble stitch but i kept so yeah there on top is the bubble stitch and you can see i have also hung a little dream catcher i got for my best friend when she visited me last time um, I also hang up there and on the top I did a little wannabe makami thing <laughs> of, the, of this one. Uh, so yeah, it's on top it's a bubble stitch. I have to go on with it, but I have to uh, re-watch or find my notes <laughs> when I really did here. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, what exactly did I, how? So I have to rewatch uh, a tutorial in YouTube on how to do the bubble stitch. And 
yeah, find my notes to realize about decreases and increases in what I was planning. I don't know. But just putting it at the side again. So, yeah, that's the first thing I was doing. <laughs> These are chop stitch. Chop sticks. So, chop sticks. I put in them because, yeah, <laughs> I just had the one um, stick I found outside. And we have like a drawer full of chopsticks. So I think it's cute. And I like the aesthetic of having different, oop, different sticks and everything. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty cute. Um, I'll insert a picture I posted on Instagram and I link my Instagram on the bottom um, in the description box. So yeah, if you're curious what I'm doing, if you want to have like spoilers through the week, little peek ins what I'm doing. So that's one thing I was doing. I This I put up on Monday or Tuesday and this on Thursday or Wednesday. I, I don't know anymore. Um, but yeah, it's growing. I want to put up more on this side. You, you won't see it, but I may show you a picture. Um, and maybe a little bit more here so you can see it. It would be nice. Um, I have a few other swatches still which I can hang up. But yeah, I, I don't know um, which kind of sticks to use because maybe I want to have another really cute stick. But that's a different aesthetic and I like, like the style contrasts. Kind of, this is so, it's crochet and the colors with the stick, it's romantic and there's, uh, yeah, the dream catcher above it. So it's it's really romantic and this is kind of more geometric and more like, yeah, more like it's a knitting swatch I hang up. So it's, it's a different style, I think. And I think uh, I want to do another one with hanging up with maybe like a, a pencil or brush. Yeah, I have this slim long brushes. This could be cute or I would love to hang it up on a knitting needle, but then I would lose the knitting needle and there would be kind of, yeah, ways. <laughs> Um, maybe if I lose one or break one, I could use the other one for this or something like that. But I don't know. Just buying little needles to hang it up. It's kind of hmm. cutie calities. Um, she calls her fan, not fans. She calls her viewers cutie calities. Um, I'm gonna insert. A picture of uh, the video uh, she made. She she made a dress, a white dress, in much um, thinner yarn than I did. Um, it's it's a really pretty dress, but it's like a bodycon dress. It's not really what I wear. Um, it's more like a party dress. Um, really fitted, really nice. Um, really pretty, it really suits her. She looks really pretty in it. Like like I said, I'm gonna answer the photo. Um, it was really inspiring. I, I liked the pattern she used um, and I wanted to do something like that, something inspired by it. And I had this uh, wool, uh, this yarn, um, which I ordered on Etsy, one of the dyers had this in stock. This isn't hand dyed. Uh, this is some fabric made yarn, but it's really pretty and cute in a sort. And it was on sale because it was like uh, the last she had in stock, I think. And I just, uh, it, yeah, it, it was a, a bargain in my opinion. And I, I couldn't resist. Um, 
and she had like um I, I fell in love with this one but she only had one left of the skein and the colorway is so pretty so pretty um when i did the swatch I, i show you the swatch so this is the swatch it's easier to hold up the swatch than the whole garment which isn't finished yet um so i fell in love with the one on the bottom but she only had one skein left and i, I needed to have it uh, yeah i was like it's so pretty I, i don't know what i'm gonna do out of it but i should find something um and then she, but she had this one and i think it's really really pretty i was like okay then we're gonna make this one and some pops of this one but she only had like I don't know four of this one um and i wanted to have like five or um even six because my plan was to do kind of um yeah i, I want to have a sweater quantity basically um and i'm gonna do an oversized sweater we'll Like here now, the armpits. I'm kind of learning as we go, going with the flow, whatever we're doing. Um, I basically um, use the full skein to do like the the bottom. It will be oversized, really. It's kind of if it would be a sawboard one, I think it would be a large, and I'm more like a. a I like it oversized, so I take a medium, but yeah, it's more like a large, so it will be oversized. So I'm making it a little bit shorter. Initially, I wanted to make it like mid um, thigh length, but it will be so baggy and heavy. Um, and yeah, like I said, really oversized, so I, I will crop it to like um, waist crop to the waist I, i don't really want a real crop sweater so for me um <laughs> for me regular length is long and cropped is like to to my yeah to, to the hip to to the waist like a normal jeans would be when it's not low eyes and not <laughs> does it make sense you know what i mean so yeah so um no where, where, where was i going i was talking about yeah she had only four of this so um i also bought two of this which was like yeah it's pretty but it's not as pretty as this one but when i did the swatch it is really pretty i'm really not sad that i bought it It's no disappointment it has like this one has like pink orange and red but this one has like so much more different colors it's like the blues and the greens and the teals and then this sandy camel color and when the light was there's like a forest dark green there's like an olive green It's a different shade of gold, goldy colors, and then it's like a purpley blue. It's so, so pretty. So I'm not sad. So I bought four of this and two of this, um, and then she she wrote me <laughs> nice. <laughs> she wrote me that uh, she's sorry, but um, she don't has four any more of this and um she don't know why uh Etsy thought she would have because she never told the the jet for she only had um like two or three I don't know but she replaced one or two by this um it's only the pink one it's a plain pink one but she she told me it's the same pink one then 
in the um, three color way, pinkish, orange, red one. Um, if it would be okay if she would replace it, she asked me. I was like, yeah, totally fine. You do you, just send me the yarn. Um, yeah, I was already hyped up from <laughs> to, to getting my yarn. Yeah, I have the, the skein of it, of one of it. And it's so pretty. Um, so yeah, that's how, how I got this yarn. That's the long story of what a... Uh, I'm a rambler, I'm sorry. Maybe I should do a disclaimer next time at the beginning. So yeah, that's how far we got. We're kind of like here now, so we're de decreasing. And I think, um, yeah, I was like thinking, uh, doing two more rows of the pattern um, until it gets to where I want to do my neckline. Because I was thinking about doing the neckline again in this color, so we would have like a nice little color in the dark in the darker color going around and I think I have enough yarn to do um, long sleeves I hope so. I will be happy with whatever comes out and just I'm good I just want to have this pretty yarns all over my body and walking around and so I'm like this is my portable blanket I made it myself I love it it's pretty it's huge it's comfortable it's warm it will bring me joy for the whole winter next winter now spring is starting but we don't care Okay, let's look, take a, let's take a closer look at that snout. Let's take a closer look at that pattern. Um, there's like cross stitches. Here. And here. It's like uh, half double crochets, I think. Um, US tones. Would be half triples in UK farms. It's a guess. We're all confused by this. Um, and double crochets, triple crochets, whatever um, in between. And then we have these braids. Oh no, I think that's maybe double crochets too and that's the half double crochets I don't know I popped in the link to the tutorial at the beginning so you know where to find it yeah this braids which are really cool looking too and I'm variegating um, with the plain pink ones to every few rows and just doing a double crochet line in between which looks pretty cool I think I'm gonna do the sleeves, like I said, we're gonna do the collar in this one again and then we're gonna do like the sleeves on top of this one and then we're gonna um, do the rest in this one and the, the calf, I, I think also in this one, I think not half and half the bottom a little bit longer I think because we use more of this color um, here in the body so I won't have enough to do it half and half I think we'll see surprise surprise it's like somebody made a pattern for me and I didn't I don't know it it's a surprise for us all but I think maybe we're doing a little bit bell like sleeves we got I will try it on once, once, once I um, stitched the the shoulders together. I can try it properly on and see if it will be too bulky with bell sleeves or if we can do it. 
depends on how much yarn we will have left, depends on how bulky this will look anyway. I think I'm a process maker, not a pro, I'm a process and a product maker, kind of. I'm gonna be happy anyway. Um, so that's one thing we worked on, but I also got something new to show you. I bought a drop spindle. I bought a drop spindle kit, um, a hand spinning kit. Um, I bought it from Amazon, which we, we shouldn't support Amazon, I know, but I couldn't find something on Etsy I was happy with. And, this, and I could find this on Amazon and uh, So, I bought this kit, I already used it, and there's like um, a little description in it, how to use it, but I already watched YouTube tutorials, I was like ready to go. It, uh, it came from the UK, so it took a little bit, I'm in Germany, it took a little while to arrive, and I already was hyped up, I was thinking about for... Uh, buying something like this for months and I was ready for it to arrive and I was waiting for the postman with yeah great expectations I ordered it with the sock yarn I'll show you later again oh, we also make progress with that but I'll show you later um, but you'll see um, the, the sock arrived like yeah, last week it was all about the sock and this week it will be about the drop spindle and yeah we're already 30 minutes in but yeah um so the kit included like fiber we had like white fiber we have like this um, brownish one we have gray one and we have black one. I uh, used the white one and the gray one already and I added uh, two colored fibers from the shop which is like the green package and the pink package. So that's what we got. I mixed some with green and pink. We also have left and with the white, pink, green one, I showed you, I made this. Like this. Isn't that pretty? It's my first self-spun yarn. On Monday and on Friday? I don't know anymore. Um, yeah two times half an hour and then I picked it up, picked it off because I wanted to try other colors for the next time. Um, but I think it's really pretty. It's 7.7 uh, .7 gram. It's, it's cute. Isn't it cute? It's inspired. I picked uh, um, the colors like the green and the pink and purples because this is like um, really thick, thick and thin yarn, as you can see. And like I said, I don't know where to go with this project. I don't know if I said it, but I was thinking about saying it. It counts. Um, so yeah, it, this watch is going nowhere, but it's too pretty to uh, that, that's what I was saying. It was too pretty to scratch it, so I hang it up. But I need to do something with it. So I was thinking about, um, yes, somebody, some video or something uh, told me um, that bulky yarn is um, nice to practice spinning at the beginning. Um, because it's already kind of pre-spun, but it isn't really, you can like, yeah, it's a good exercise option um, if you don't 
if you're overwhelmed by buying loose fibers, maybe. So I can spin it tighter and make it thinner because it's it's too bulky. It doesn't the ideas I had it it doesn't look good. I wanted to do color work and something, but it's too and the <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't feel right to do what I want to do, but it's really pretty. It is pretty. Um, but yeah, so I was like choosing the same color so I could do something um, with it. So yeah, this is the first thing. And it does match. Could combine it. I was thinking about well at the moment i'm doing because i started a different color um and next time i think i'm gonna start a different color again so i will have multiple <laughs> really mini skeins like less than 10 grams or maybe i i try to go for 10 grams next time i don't know between five and ten grams. I think this is even less than this because this is only one work session. Um, but it's really pretty too. I used the gray and I think three different, three or four different shades of uh, pink. I think three different shades of pink and it's dark, darker more burgundy color and the gray one which is really pretty in my opinion so i will have different really mini skeins and more with this colorway i have i think two balls of the pink ones and two of the greenish ones the minty one and i think three of the white one <laughs> Yeah, I have like a, a big cardigan size off because that's what I was planning. And yeah, but I think I want to spin it thinner and combine it with the mini skeins. So we have like two different variegations going on. It's like you have like the white, the pink and the mint from this one will be the base color um the big blocks and then overlapping you will have multiple smaller blocks with the same colors mostly yeah you also have the brown the gray and the black but yeah really small sections so it will be like double striping maybe and the strats I, I want to combine, I will, yeah, like um, when you use like this end and this end and you, you twist and make one double spun yarn. I don't know the expressions yet. I'm still learning. I'm really at the beginning of this journey, but I'm so hyped up. I'm really all in. Um, so that's what I want to do with it. I, I hope it's understandable. But yeah, it's really fun. Um, it will take me a while, but I keep you updated when I'm working on it. Um, next thing we've done. Oh yeah, the sock. Let's talk about the sock. The sock. The sock. I was... Um, last time we ended um oh we were at normal sock height height i think like um uh, calf length like under the knee still <coughs> sorry um like under the knee um but like i told you last time we want to see how far we can go we can knit with one skein of um, sports weight, um, 100 gram um, normal sock fingering weight, no, sock weight yarn. How much sock we can get of 
100 gram skein. That's what I wanted to see. Um, I did from Arnold Carlos the easy sock and the wall tutorial. So you have a little toe heel, the foot, and you do an after thought heel, but I was impatient. So when I was like here, I, I already did it because like I said, I want to see how far we can go with one skin. So, um, and I didn't know how much I would need for it. So I just did it in between. Um, yeah, when, when you were, when you wear it, it will stretch out and look like a normal sock. It, it won't look so pointy and there you have to uh, stitch. So there's the foot of the sock. There you go. You have the foot of the sock. And then you have like the leg. I want to see how far we can go. Um, but I had like uh, 10 grams left. I was splitting the 100 gram skin into two um, 50-50 skins, yarn balls, so I would know how far I can go with one sock and have the same on the other sock. And I was like under the knee or at the knee exactly um, and I had like this 10 grams left and I was like hmm and I was like so far and I, I didn't want to wait too long to start the calf uh, and then have like a too small calf because it would be a really high sock and then I would want to have a, a proper calf so it will hold up um, and look nice um, and I was insecure about how much I would need for the calf so I started it and I did it and I had like this much it, it was a pretty good calf it, it was a lot and my my yarn ball was getting smaller but it, there was still a lot left I was like how much is this still um, I was really doubting myself so I, I waited it and there was like 4.77 77 gram left so nearly five grams of the 10 grams were still left so I would have like double the amount of calf so it would be like that's a long calf for a sock I mean <laughs> no and I could have just bind it off and say okay we're done and then I would have five gram left but this <sighs> I kind of did like this challenge with myself to use like the whole skein of yarn to know to, to don't have a waist and because I wanted to have an over the knee sock and I wanted to know I, just for fun to find out how how much sock you can get out of 100 gram skein of, of yarn because I I don't know I just need to answer this question for myself with my foot size it's I don't know maybe we'll never know but I need to answer this question for myself how much sock will I get out of the skin of yarn um, so um, since I already did the after thought heel I knew how to um, pick up the stitches um, again and I how to not lose them because just unraveling it, just pulling out the needles and unravel it and then trying to pick up the stitches again, I knew that wouldn't work at all, that there would be a disaster. I would have lost everything. So I picked them up like I did with the after thought heel where you just take a needle and you go through every second loop um, and you do it like 
four times so you have another pair of needles in your sock um, so I did that at the bottom of my calf picked them up again and then I took the top ones out and unraveled it until the whole calf was gone and it was heartbreaking to see my work go <laughs> unravel um, but I, I wanted to do it right and just yeah I would be kind of disappointed if I wouldn't find out how much sock I can get out of this game I don't know why I don't know why it's so important for me. It, it 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 isn't important for me. It really isn't. But kind of, I don't know, out of curiosity, the, the inner child in me really asked me, but how much? Um, yeah. So I unraveled it and I was kind of sad about it because um, the calf, it's a two base, two ribbing. Um, and that was a lot slower in comparison to the just knitting of the whole leg, which went really fast, was surprisingly fast in my opinion. Um, it took me a few sittings, sure, but when I just watch some Netflix in the evening uh, for two hours or something like that and just knit on my sock um, and I do that for like we did it last week and we were at calf length and this time we were like the knee and the ribbing so we would have finished so we did like that much like more than so per sitting I, I would say I do like that would be like five to ten centimeters and like it's a few inches like three inches or four inches I don't know um, I just can guess I'm really bad at guessing um, in one sitting in one evening so you can go pretty far in a week in my opinion that's kind of a I enjoy to see it grow so every time I, I do one sitting I can say ah oh, look <laughs> I every time show it to my wife and we have a little bit longer sock. Like the first one said, look, we have a short sock. Look, we have a little bit longer sock. Look, we have a normal size sock. Look, we have socks to the knee. Look, we have a sock over the knee. So it's kind of, it's a new thing every day. Kind of, yeah, it makes me happy. I don't know about you, but I, uh, I don't know. Do, do you know that feeling? Are you excited about it every day? Um, but yeah, the, the the calf was a bit slower. It took me a few, like two, three sittings. I was already working at the calf, um, and then I and I needed to unravel it um, because I have to concentrate a little bit more when I do a two by two ribbing in comparison to just knitting. I'm sorry. I think I, I'm talking too much and then I need to go up. Um, so yeah, I unraveled the calf and now I'm doing more of the normal stitches and until I reach like uh, five grams and then we do the calf again. And then it's done. I, I have to look up how to really do the bind off because I was thinking about doing like a, just I think a normal bind off. I don't, I, I didn't realize that it would, that there's a whole world of bind offs to explore. But I think there are different, like next sock like the next pair of socks i will try to do a different heel and a different toe because apparently there are endless ways to do a heel and a toe who knew that there are so much heel and two variations in the sock world but i'm ready to explore so yeah 
and Jaya. The Adventures of Sophie and the Soccer World. Um, yeah, so we're knit. We're going on with knitting this until we have five gram left, and then we're doing the two by two ribbings, and then one sock will be done. And um, it will be an Orny sock, probably, which is really cool, in my opinion. And then we will have the second one to go, but I'm. Um, if I don't lose my mojo, I think now that I've figured out how to do everything, um, that the second one would be faster and better looking than the first one because it's it's, it's okay if you tr if you wear it, it will look totally fine. But I have this. Um, it's called a ladder. I think I I learned. Um, where you go from one needle to the other and I didn't pull it tight enough. Um, the stitches, so there's a ladder. But I don't mind, we just call it a design element. Um, why not? Um, and I had an impression it didn't appear on the, on the ribbing, so we really can call it a design element um yeah i have one last thing bear with me one last thing that peaked here in the corner all the time which i picked up today again because i didn't know what to do i was like hmm it's sunday i was like i, I want to enjoy my afternoon coffee with some a uh, craft thing because it's Sunday. I want to enjoy myself. I want to watch knitting podcasts and dying, dying yarn videos. Oh my God! Do, do you know um, Cam knits um, on on YouTube? She, it's like chemistry and knitting combined. Cam knits, so cool. Um, and she does like yarn dyeing experiments with food coloring um, sometimes and sometimes other. It's my new, it's like visual ASMR for me. Um, it's, it's so nice to see it. But for me, it's magic. It's magic. It's yarn dyeing magic. Let's just dream about magic. So rambling over the last thing the last thing i wanted to show you which i picked up today again but i already worked a lot on it um i'm more than halfway through oh no i have to do the border so i think i'm halfway through it's a blanket yeah it's uh how is it called uh I don't know, I'll insert a, a photo or something, how it's called. It's like the autumn colors pack of the designers. I don't know. I don't know. I insert a photo. But it looks like this. Yeah, it's not straight here because... Because I don't know what we did there. But just the beginner. <laughs> No, I'm well, not really a beginner. I, I crafted all my life, but I kind of, yeah, make breaks in between. Um, yeah, that's how far we got. It's all the different colors and different patterns, different pattern repeats, so it's never boring. And you do like um, double crochets in between, so it really is, it isn't boring at all. And I think here was the halfway mark and now you're repeating uh, patterns you had before. So you're starting here again. So yeah, maybe it's less than halfway. This one you're not doing again. I don't know why. Just isn't in a pattern. You're starting with this, with um, stashed granny squares. Again, we have here at the top, and then 
yeah this like is the close zipper i think here you have like waves there you have like zigzags here you have two lips i think that's a smaller version of this one that's so cool when you're working with different yarns it's I'm such a yarn you guys so, so in love with love yarn but like this it's the same as this, but it looks so different. So much possibilities. Um, and here you have like a different kind of waves. You have like this waves and this waves. Here you have like bubble stitches. And there we go. And then at the end, uh, you're doing a border, but I didn't read the pattern so far um so we'll see how it goes but um it's a blanket so it will be double the length or not not as much so it will be more like a lap blanket it's not like a bed size blanket um so i think it's too pretty to always to be a blanket I want to use it, I want to be able to use it wherever I want and I'm gonna wear this outside and you can't wear a blanket outside, you're gonna tell me, but I can, I can, I can wear it as an oversized scarf, like, wait, I lost my stitch and we don't want to do that. Like, you can have, if you wear it, like, I need to hold the hook in the back, but if you do it properly, you can have, like, an oversized scarf. I mean, it will keep you warm. Just do it into the jacket or whatever. I think I can do it. People will think it's a scarf, and I don't. I don't care what people think. Anyway, so, or, um, so it will be a scarf slash or a poncho. So, like, shawls, you, shawls are really grandma, I'm sorry. I really, I really don't think I can, I can rub a shawl. Like, you put like this, oversized scarf around your shoulders and you I, i'm not it reminds me like shawls are for me like in some translucent fabric and you have like this ball going and then you have like a shawl and you're like cinderella but i'm not i'm not cinderella i walk something bulky and then i will look like a homeless who's walking around with their blanket and we don't want people to know that I'm just wearing a blanket. I tried to wrap it around me to be like a dress or a skirt but it looks like I'm wearing a blanket so no. So but we could do like a poncho with it maybe if we um if I um do a little bit of seaming um under the arms it could look like like a poncho. It would be really colorful poncho, but I don't care. Maybe, I will, as I said, I bought it in a kid, but, and I'm halfway through, but this yarn boards are huge. I wasn't thinking about it when I bought it, about the quantity of yarn, which would be in the kid. And when the kids arrived, it was like, that's a lot of yarn. And I was like surprised <laughs> and I was thinking like oh and I think I, I did a pretty good bargain <laughs> I don't know uh, they were for for really a lot of yarn and really pretty and really th this is acrylic but it was really soft and really pretty and I think it will wear nicely as a scarf or as a poncho so I will be really happy and like I said, I wasn't thinking about how much yarn really was in that kit, but I will have, 
I, I kind of just imagined that it would be the right quantity for the blanket, right? Like you're buying a kit for making the blanket, you're buying the colors for the blanket, it was like a kit. So I imagine that you would put like, not exactly, a little bit over so we're sure that we have enough yarn. But they kind of just pushed in like whole skeins of yarn in it. So because we're halfway through the blanket, even more, but this is not, this is much more than half a skein left. It's, it's much more. So I will have a lot of left over in every color. So we can do a lot of fun things with it. <laughs> Such a bargain. It's acrylic, okay, but you can wash it in a machine. I can even cold iron it. It doesn't wrinkle, so why would I iron it? Maybe to block it. Maybe to block it, but I don't think I have to. Block. I didn't block these, by the way. I should have. I tried to avoid blocking because I was too lazy. Because, mm -hmm. because I by by putting in the chop stitch and trying to stretch it out as far as possible so I don't have to block it but someday I will block it and then it will be even cooler and bigger and professional looking so yeah um, that was a lot of rambling and a bit of showing stuff well, a lot of showing stuff. That's what I was working on this week. Um, in the evenings, um, every day is doing something different. All my days off. Yeah. Um, tomorrow it's a new week. We'll see <laughs> which editing style, which filming style I will choose for next week. But everything's a surprise here on the channel. The editing style, the filming style. The hanging up style, the crafting thing. It just, the design patterns even are a surprise. We're just working as we go, just looking what happens. Will we have enough, enough yarn? We don't know. Will we have long sleeve or, or should, no? A short sleeve or a long sleeve, we don't know. It's everything a surprise here on the channel, here in my little world. But yeah, it's kind of that's why uh, this craft is kind of um, meditative for me, it's kind of mind yoga for me. It's because um, it teaches me to have patience and to just um, going along and enjoying the process and not try to control everything because I try to control my life but sometimes you just can't control everything so I I learned to enjoy the process and just um, enjoying a surprise because in, in real life I don't like surprises don't surprise me no <laughs> but here in the crafty world surprises are a good thing and it's pretty and yeah um i never know how to end a conversation so see you next time bye bye